And then learning from the New Testament that we have weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. And sometimes, sometimes I wonder, do we really understand that the weapons that the Lord has given to us are actually mighty through God? Do we believe, do we really believe that as the church militant, the church on earth, that God has equipped us sufficiently to deal with what we're facing in this generation. And I, 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 I don't care that I find myself being repetitious on this point because I think it needs to be bedded into your soul because every week, every single week, you leave this place, you go into the world, you see the headlines, and you, you wonder what direction is the world going and is there any hope? So you come into this month particularly and you see the assault. You hear language as, as if the, the, these people are, 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 are attacked and sidelined and they're, they're, they're the object of, of great affliction. And yet every national or multinational corporation, every influential corporation in America, almost every single one of them, stands with them. But not one, hardly one, will stand for the church, for those things that are related in the Word of God. This is how twisted, this is how twisted things get that we call evil good and good evil. And the church, amidst her suffering, feels what it is to be truly outcast. And the danger in that is that we imagine we have no weapons to deal with it. That there's no answer for it. That we just have to be subjected to this ongoing assault. And so we'll, in some fashion, feel. Our prayer is, as I reminded you recently, thy kingdom come. Not thy kingdom will be extinguished, or thy kingdom will be blotted out, or thy kingdom must be stalled, or thy kingdom has to be shelled for a time. No, thy kingdom come. 